Okay, so this is the second video. Thanks for coming back. So um, I mentioned in the last video that I was going to do a few videos on the kind of the basics of Python just to help out those of you who are taking the virtual computer science um, uh, virtual classes. Just for those of you who are less familiar with Python or who have less experience with it in the past at our former Coder Dojo. And this is just going to kind of focus purely on the Python coding aspect of things. We're not going to talk about any of the, the kind of the class content. So we talked about algorithms during uh, during the class this week, and we looked at some basic Python, and I'm just going to focus exclusively on Python now, again, to help those of you who are less familiar with it ramp up and just get your head around the basics. That will make things easier for you in the future classes, and maybe you're just interested in learning more about Python anyway, even though Python is not really central to the theme of the, the computer science theme of the class. Um, Python is a programming language. It's a tool we're going to use to kind of explore the world of computer science. So uh, what I have here is I have Open Visual Studio again. I have closed down the code samples I showed uh, in the last video. Um, we're going to write code today from scratch to demonstrate the basic concepts. And in this first video, we're just going to explore how to print messages uh, to our standard output, which is the terminal window in Visual Studio Code, which is a bit of what we did during the class this week. So and this video is going to focus exclusively on printing messages, printing out messages in Python. So I'm going to open a new file here, and I'm going to start writing. I'm going to, it tell, tells me I can pick a language to get started. So I'm just, to make things easier for you, I'm going to pick Python from the list. Uh, there it is. OK, and we're ready to go. So uh, it's if, if you're kind of new to programming, it's generally typical that the first program you'd ever write is called Hello World. And all it will do is print out the words or the message, hello world, um, out to your screen. So to do that in Python, we're going to use something called the print function. So Python has an inbuilt function called print that will allow you to print out a message to the screen. And to use that, we just simply type in print, followed by some brackets. And inside the brackets, we type in whatever it is we want to print out. So we're going to have it print out Hello world. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I'm going to open up. I'm going to save the file first because I want to um, I want to keep track of these things. So I'm going to just create it in this directory for now. Intro. Uh, I'm just going to call it example one. Dot py. Okay. Now. Uh, it gives me the little, now that I save the file, uh, it gives me the little play icon up here. So I'm going to press that. It opens a terminal window here and it prints, it runs the Python program example one. And there is my message, hello world. So you can do that along at home as well. And that's your first program in Python complete. Congratulations. Now, so print is a function that allows you to print messages out to, uh, out to the screen. In this case, the screen is the terminal window down here. Now, um, in Python, we have this concept of comments. And a comment is a line that will not run. OK? And a, uh, a comments line starts with the pound sign. So if I want to explain what I'm doing, this is a coding demonstration. Python is going to ignore this line. It will not try and run this line of code because we have the pound sign at the very beginning. So we usually use a comment to explain what our code is doing, or if we can put it in front of a line of code to stop it from running. Maybe it's causing a problem and we want to run the, the program without a particular line of code. So if I was to do this, this line won't print out. As I said, this line will not print out, even though it's a perfectly valid print function. Uh, we have the pound sign at the front, and therefore Python is not going to run this code. So to prove the point, I will save it again, and I will press play. And again, we just get our hello world message. We do not get a printout of this line won't print out, as expected. With the print function, whatever it is you want to print out to the screen, you have it goes inside the brackets after the word print. 
So we have an opening bracket and we have a closing bracket. And whenever we want to print out goes between the two brackets. So um, for example, I can go print something else. For example, print, uh, I'm from Cork. I have a terrible habit of making uppercase O's. And save that, and if I run that again, I'm going to get this time, hello world, and the message, I'm from Cork. You may have noticed that I put some quotation characters before and after the message I wanted to print out. In Python, when you want to print a series of characters out to the screen, they have to be surrounded by quote characters. So in this example, um, um, uh, it is actually an algorithm. This is another message I want to print out to the screen. I surrounded it in double quotes. So again, I'll play that, so save it and run that. And then we get that line of code. The double quotation character is usually found on a UK uh, Irish keyboard by pressing the shift key on your keyboard and pressing the number two. Like that, I get lots of them. Um, we don't just have to use double quotes, we can use single quotes as well. So I could also do this, uh, or I can do a single quote, which on my keyboard is under the at key. Single quotes, this is also allowed. So I'll save that and I will run it. And we get that message as well. Excellent. So any series of characters that we want to print out has to be surrounded by either double quotes or the single quote characters. Now, in Python and in most programming languages, any sequence of characters like this that is surrounded on each side by either a single quote or a double quote is called a string. A string is a sequence of characters. A string is a sequence of characters. Print. This is also a string. So everything you've seen so far is a string. This is a string. This is a string. This is also a string. And guess what? This is a string too, as is this and as is that. These are all strings. So any sequence of characters in Python and in most programming languages is called a string. And to print a string, the string has to be surrounded in either double quotes or single quotes. Python will not know what to do if you try to print a string without quotation characters. The text editor of Visual Studio Code is already flagging before I have even run the program that this is a problem. So this time I haven't put any quotation characters around my supposed string. So this is not a string. If I try and run this, I've saved this and I'll try and run it now. It's executed every other line, but it wasn't able to run line 17. You can see there's an error here. Example one, file line 17. Syntax error, invalid syntax. So this will not run because it is, we want it to be a string, but for it to run, it would need to be surrounded in some quotation characters. So this is an example where I might comment out that line of code to make it work again. So I'll put a comment there, a pound sign, and if I run that, the program runs all the way through successfully, but does not print out this, and it wouldn't be able to print that out anyway. And that is a basic introduction to printing things out with strings. But strings aren't the only thing that we can actually print out to the screen in Python. We can print other things as well, such as numbers. So let me come down a bit more. And I'm going to say, for example, print seven. Seven is supposed to be a lucky number. So let's print seven. So I'll save that and press run. It prints out all the strings we had before, but now it also prints out seven. And perhaps you're wondering, why did we not have to put seven in double quotes or single quotes? That's because in this case, seven is not a string. Seven is a number. So a number is a different type of data in Python. It's different to a string. Numbers in Python do not have to be surrounded in quote characters. So that is why this is perfectly valid. I could do this, 
I could put that seven in a quote like that, and I could run that. And I get two sevens, and the output is exactly the same. But you and I both know that the first seven is actually a number, and the second seven, because it's surrounded in quotation characters, is a string. So Python can treat, can actually have numbers inside strings as a sequence of characters. For example, you could do this, print. My favorite number is seven. This is all the string. Even though there's a seven in there, it is part of this string, and therefore the entire uh, piece of text is a string. So I say, if I say that and run that, I get my favorite number is seven. If I take out the quotation characters, this isn't going to make it any better. If I run that, we get another. It will not run. We get another. We get another syntax error. Okay. Now, Python can also uh, perform arithmetic operations. So, for example, I can, if I didn't have a calculator handy, I could use it to add numbers together. I could do print two plus three. I'm going to take that. I'm going to put that back the way it was, just to fix it up. Okay, and run, and we get five. So. Python has added two and three together, and we got five. What do you think would happen if I did this? Without even running that, you know this is going to print out five, but what is this going to print out? Yeah, I bet you guessed it all right. It's going to print out the string two plus three. It's certainly not going to add them together because they're not numbers. They're surrounded in quotes, so the whole thing is a string. So if we run that, there we go. We get the string two plus three printed out onto my terminal window. So as expected, Python has treated this as a string because it is a string. It's surrounded in quotes, so it's a string. Um, we can do other arithmetic operations in Python. So for example, we can multiply two numbers. I could do um, print three multiplied by four. And in Python, the little star icon, which on my keyboard, I have to press shift and eight together, is the multiplication symbol. So if I save that and press run, it's multiplied three by four and we get 12, of course. So if you don't have your calculator handy, but you have Python to hand, you're in a lot for a lot of luck. Now, um, I can do more than just two numbers, of course, I could mix operations, I could do this. Now, what do you think the result of that is going to be? Hmm. Let's run this and see. 14. So what happened there? In Python and in a lot of programming languages, certain operators like multiplication have a higher precedence. In other words, like a higher priority than other operators. So in, in most programming languages, a multiplication operation has higher precedence than an addition operation. So what happened here was Python first did the multiplication operation, which is three times four, which will give you 12, and then will add two to whatever the result is. So it's going to add two to the 12 it gets from doing this, and that's why you get 14. That is the correct order, but let's say, for example, I wanted it to do the, the addition operation first. Is there any way I could force it to do that? And the answer is yes. I could put the two plus three in, a, in another pair of brackets. And Python will, with the brackets, Python will see this as being higher priority than the multiplication. I'm essentially telling Python, this is the most important thing and I want you to do this first. So what will the output of that, of that be now if it does the two plus three first? It's going to be 20, of course. Two plus three, which it does first, is five, and five times four is 20. Now, finally, to finish off, um, for all of these, now let's, let's try this example next. Print, we've dealt with a lot of whole numbers here. What if I do this? Two plus three 
multiplied by 4 and divided by 10. The forward slash symbol in most programming languages like Python means divide. And of course, the minus symbol means subtract. Of course, we haven't done any subtraction here, but minus is subtract. The, the, the forward slash symbol is a divide uh, symbol. So what do you think the answer will be to this one? There's a lot of different things going on in there. Let's save it and run it. So we got 3.2. So how did it come up with that particular answer? Well, multiplication is the highest priority operation, followed by division, followed by addition, and then the, the lowest priority operation is actually subtraction. So it would have multiplied three times four first. So to demonstrate that, I'm going to open a Python shell here in my terminal, and I'm just going to type in raw Python. So if I do three times four, I get 12. The next thing it would have done is divided that by 10. So if I do 12 divided by 10, you get 1.2. And then the last thing there is the addition of the two here. So two plus 1.2, and we get 3.2. So there we go. So we can do division as well in Python, and there's different, uh, there's different, uh, there's different uh, orders for the operations here. I also could have explicitly stated these to be decimal numbers. I could have done two dot zero plus three dot zero times four dot zero divided by ten dot zero. The output. Let me kill this now. Let's stop that. Not Python for me. There we go. Um, I'm going to run that. Oh, and I beg your pardon. I've... That's different to the first operation. There we go. So I could have also explicitly said I want to have decimal places as well. So Python can deal with whole numbers that do not have a decimal place. These are called integers. And Python can also deal with decimal numbers as well which are numbers that have a decimal point in them. And these types of numbers um, in most programming languages are either called floats or doubles. So a float or a double is a type of number that has a decimal place in it. Float is short for floating point number, uh, just FYI. And then a whole number that does not have a decimal place is called an integer. And Python can work with both. So. Just with the print statement alone, we've been able to see a lot of different features of the Python programming language uh, very, very quickly. How it deals with arithmetic, how it deals with numeric types of data, and how it deals with character data, such as these strings. So that was the print statement, a bit of arithmetic, and a bit of, a, a bit of uh, syntax uh, details as well about how to print out these different types of things. So that's it. In the next video, we're going to take a quick look at an introduction to variables. But for now, thank you for tuning into this video and I will see you in the next one.